Hey everyone, my name is Michael Lombardo with GlideFast Consulting and today I'll be doing a demo of incident management. We'll just quickly go over some of the fields that are on this form out of the box. If you look, we have a number of fields and basically it's just unique identifier. So when your user calls in, you, you can give them a number to refer back to if they want to call back um, and check the status and so on and so forth. Uh, we have a caller, obviously that's the person calling in. We have a category and a subcategory. We have a configuration item field. And basically that's just an item or a service that is affected for that incident. A short description is obviously a short description of the incident. Um, you have your contact type, email, phone, self-service, walk-in. Um, this just indicates obviously how was this record created. State, so state is basically how we manage the life cycle of this incident. So we have new, in progress, on hold, resolved, closed, canceled. We have impact and urgency and priority. Um, in idle best practice, we have this um, impact times urgency equals priority. Um, so you'll see if as I change this um, impact option, it modifies the priority. I have a quick breakdown of the chart. So you'll see if you choose a, high, a low urgency and a low impact, that's a priority five. If you choose a high urgency, high impact, obviously it's priority one. Um, so just out of the box, we're following idle best practice and that's just one small example of that. Assignment group, obviously the group that's gonna own the incident and then the assigned to is, is the user that, that will end up owning that. If we scroll down to the to the lower half of the form, we have um, a journaled field called additional comments, um, and you have another journaled field called work notes. So additional comments, and you'll see it's in quotes here, it's customer visible. We really wanna make that clear to our staff that anything you type into this field is going to be sent to your end user. So it's you know not something you wanna put, um, maybe you wouldn't wanna put too much technical walkthrough or background of the record uh, of the ex of the interaction with the user. Um, you want to you know put that into the work notes to share with the tier two team you're you're passing this off to or something. So um, very important to know the difference between additional comments and work notes. Again, additional comments to the end user, work notes strictly to IT or that licensed user who who's a fulfiller. Um, of of this record and really it's it's all across service now the whole platform related records so we have um, out of the box you have just you know a problem so you can easily relate a problem record to this incident um, and obviously a change request and um, and caused by change so that maybe this incident was actually caused by a change um, not resulting in a change right we made we uh, replaced the server and be, when we did that we took down you know an application and that caused you know X amount of users to call in um, and we know because of that change it spawned off you know this particular incident so and I will say pretty much everything on this form is customizable meaning you know if you wanted to customize your cat categories which most organizations do you have the ability to do that um, same thing with states, you know, states um, may, you know, you may want to add in a couple of other different states there um, and you do have that ability. You also do have this on hold reason field. So if you do mark the state on hold, you have a waiting caller, a waiting evidence, a waiting problem resolution, a waiting vendor. So if we go ahead and go to an existing incident, I'll go... I'll get a little bit deeper into some of those fields and some of the functionality on the incident record. Um, you also have the ability to attach any document right to the incident. You can also actually drag and drop a record uh, or an attachment anywhere on this form. It's going to automatically attach it to the incident. So what I really like about Service Now, and actually, let me go ahead and just create a new incident. So if I'm typing something into the short description, so I say Outlook is down. Um, you'll see as I was typing that in, it actually real time searches the knowledge base. So as a help desk analyst, and actually this is, this is functionality is available for the end user as well in the end user form view, if you will, um, you're getting a real time search of the knowledge base. So 
you may, you know, maybe your help desk agent's new, maybe um, is a little green, and they don't know, you know, no help desk agent is going to know every single scenario that comes across their desk. So instead of them maybe escalating it to a level two, they really have the ability to see these knowledge articles and it's right in front of their face. There's no, hey, I didn't, I didn't realize we had a knowledge article or I forgot to click the search button to search the knowledge base. It does it real time. And then I can just say, I have the ability to say, hey, this was helpful. This was attached to this incident. Really, really intuitive functionality. Let's just show you a little bit of, of what it looks like when I enter notes into this journaled field. Um, something like the short description, obviously when I, when I put something in here and I save the record, um, whoops, you need a caller. Go ahead and put Sabrina here. So you'll see when I actually save this record, whatever I typed in the short description stays there. Well, the, the difference with the journaled field is if I type in a note, we may have multiple updates, obviously, to the, this incident in work notes and or, or um, a comments to the end user. So I may say, um, this user was very upset. Can you please help as soon as possible? And in this scenario, I'm just saying maybe I'm passing off to a level two. Uh, and as I save it, you'll see it. the field resets and it logs it below here. Uh, same thing with additional comments. So this type of field is called a journaled field. We also have a work watch list and a work notes list. Um, I have the ability to add, maybe I have members outside of the organization here that I want to include into these comments and get updates on this incident. Maybe there are people in the organization I want to, so I can actually search the user base as well. So we have that ability. And I can either resolve it by clicking the resolve button in the upper right hand corner, or I can just hit this drop down and click resolved. Now we do have a little bit of a difference between resolved and closed, and this may be new to some people who are not familiar with idle best practices. And basically, we leave an incident when the service desk or you know tier two to tier three support is ready to resolve an incident. They set it to a state of resolved and the end user will actually get a notification to say, hey, your incident's been resolved. You now have X amount of time to resolve this incident. I believe service now out of the box is three days, but that's obviously configurable. So, and then after three days, the system automatically closes it if we don't hear back from the user. Now, it's really so the end user doesn't call back in continuously reopening the same incident, right? We don't want them, you know, maybe they have a printer problem on Monday. We don't want them calling back two weeks later and saying, oh yeah, it's the same incident number. And then you go there, it's an actually a computer problem. And end users kind of think they're gaming the system by thinking they'll get quicker service if they give you an existing ticket number. Uh, and, and that's actually usually not even the case. It just, it screws up metrics and it's, um, and this kind of closed versus resolved um, process solves that issue. So once an incident's closed, it cannot be reopened. So that's kind of the, the whole point behind that. So I'm going to go ahead and set this incident to resolve. And if I scroll down, you'll see I have a couple of required fields, the close code and the close notes. Close code out of the box, we have some options here. I'm just going to not get too much into that. I'm just going to select uh, solve workaround. Obviously, those are customizable, just like any other choice field in ServiceNow. For the closed notes, I'm going to go ahead and actually throw in some filler text here. And what I really like about what ServiceNow does out of the box is this knowledge checkbox. And you'll see, if checked, it will automatically create a draft knowledge article upon closure. So what the problem that this solves, and this is a great example of the ServiceNow automation, that just the, what, what ServiceNow is capable of as well. But, what it, but from a process perspective, what happens as a service desk agent is sometimes when they get a call that they can't resolve, they escalate it to a tier two or tier three support. There's kind of no closing the loop, right? So when that tier two, tier three resolves that incident, there's no communication back to that service desk agent to say, hey, this is how... I close this incident. It's kind of not feasible for that to happen. So, you know, the, the, your your 
tier two or tier three is not going to call the service desk agent back every incident they receive and say, hey, this is how I resolved it. But this automation solves that problem. So the service desk agent checks this box, escalates it, and when tier two resolves this or closes this incident, I apologize, I'm going to go ahead and close this, you'll see a knowledge article was automatically created. So next time that service desk agent or any service desk agent is typing in that same short description, they now receive this knowledge article. They now are able to view this knowledge article with that closure information. And hopefully our second, third tier support is uh, putting relevant information in that knowledge article in the uh, closed notes, but that's a, you know, a process issue as well. Okay, everyone, this will conclude the ServiceNow incident management demo. My name is Michael Lombardo, and if you have any questions, you can reach me at mike at glidefast.com. Thank you.